And now it is my pleasure to introduce Elise Dara Ford, a KIPAC graduate student who is going to tell us all about galactic inscriptions and what perturbations in the Milky Way can tell us about its history. So take it away, Elise. Hi, yeah, um, I think most of you know me, but I'm Elise. I'm a fifth year graduate student here. Um, and I am going to be talking about what we can learn about the history of the Milky Way from dynamical perturbations. Um, OK, so what type of perturbations am I talking about? Um, so specifically, I'm talking about the Gaia phase spiral. Um, this is a local perturbation that was discovered in Gaia data in 2018. Um, and it indicated evidence of non-equilibrium dynamics at play in the local disk. Um, and so basically what the structure is, um, you can see it on the right over here. Um, it is this spiral feature in the Z, so that's position up and down from the plane of the disk, and VZ, that's just velocity up and down in the plane of the disk. Um, and it forms this cool spiral structure. Um, and this spiral structure is actually kind of a generic dynamical per, uh, prediction if you have some initial perturbation. And then this perturbation is going to wind um, due to differences in orbital frequencies. Um, and it turns out, because this is actually a pretty simple structure, um, you can learn about the time since this perturbation occurred by basically just measuring the shape of this spiral. OK, so what caused it? Um, so there are a number of theories as to what caused uh, this perturbation, but kind of one of the earliest ones was that it was caused by the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Um, so Sagittarius is one of the most massive dwarf galaxies currently disrupting in the halo of the Milky Way. Um, and it had a relatively recent passage through the disk um, in the last about giga year. Uh, so we wanted to study the local phase spirals, um, especially in the most recent Gaia data, um, which gave us access to much uh, higher me uh, resolution measurements of positions and velocities of local stars and a much larger sample size and try to understand does the time since this perturbation occurred match with what we expect if Sagittarius was the culprit. Okay, so uh, breezing past um, a lot of effort into actually developing this algorithm um, and testing it on simulated data. I'm happy to talk about that if people have further questions, um, but you know, in an effort to keep this concise, we built an algorithm, we named it SCARGO because we're cute, um, and then we used it to measure uh, the time since perturbation in a number of local bins around the solar neighborhood. And then we compared those times, so that's T naught here, um, to the time we would expect given uh, the orbital history of Sagittarius. And so studying that, we just basically use backwards orbit integration of the current position and velocity of Sagittarius um, to the time in which it last had a passage through the disk. Um, and basically, we found that our measured times are all a lot shorter than what we would expect if um, these spirals were being caused by the last passage through the disk of Sagittarius. Um, of course, there are a lot of uncertainties in this. Um, there are uncertainties in the current day position and velocity of Sagittarius. We know that the dark matter halo has changed in the past giga year, and so that's going to cause uncertainties in your ability to do this orbit integration. Um, but still, uh, we found it very interesting that there was uh, this offset. Um, so what could be causing this offset? So as I said, one thing could just be our own uncertainties. Um, that will require better modeling of the Milky Way's dark matter potential, a better understanding of um, the properties of Sagittarius. Um, but there are a couple of other things that could be causing this. Um, so one could be that these phase spirals are actually not being excited by the direct passage of Sagittarius, but rather large scale wakes um, in the dark matter halo caused by Sagittarius or caused by other interactions. Um, another possibility is actually that these spiral formation time are being shortened um, due to the way that these perturbations affect the disk potential itself. So this perturbation is actually changing the potential of the disk, and that can slow the spiral onset. Um, and then lastly, it's possible that there is a different mechanism causing these spirals. So people have proposed either something like the galactic bar or um, lots of small kicks from much smaller dark matter halos as a spiral formation mechanism that could work on much shorter time scales. Um, and kind of in order to understand uh, which of these mechanisms is at play, we really want to understand each of them individually. Um, so that brings me to some future work I'm going to be doing. This isn't focused um, directly on Sagittarius, but it is interested in studying kind of the impact of these large-scale wakes. Um, and so another place people who are really interested in dark matter wakes is 
with the infall of the Large Magellanic Cloud. This is the most massive satellite um, that we know of currently disrupting the Milky Way. We think it's on its first passage, and we think it really is having a large dynamical response um, in the dark matter halo of the Milky Way. Um, and so I'm going to be doing some work trying to understand how can we really robustly characterize the strength and shape of these wakes in simulations um, in order to understand more about the impact these are actually having in messy, fully realistic um, cosmological halos. So yeah, that's it. Have to shout more. And uh, while we take questions, uh, Sandy, if you can come down and get a microphone, um, and we'll start with Greg. Hi. So, uh, yeah, very nice talk. Um, I was wondering about what you assume about the vertical potential in the disk of the Milky Way, because that determines the the winding speed. So, something like the z to the fourth term is what determines the winding speed. So could you say a little bit about that? Yeah, so the something I brushed over is that um, we're actually doing this, the characterization of these phase spirals in action at angle space. And so you do have to assume a potential of the Milky Way in order to calculate actions and angles. Um, and kind of interestingly, one of the ways in which we build that potential is that you expect these phase spirals to be straight lines in action angle space if you're in the correct potential. And so one of the things we did was we took kind of a grid of Milky Way-like potentials and then looked for potentials where we saw the like straightest lines in action angle space as kind of a way to constrain which Milky Way potential uh, was the most realistic realization. Um, but there is also uncertainties in that and you do have to assume that potential. Okay, any other questions for Elise? Uh, Sean Scritti. Um, and Artem's got a microphone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, nice talk. So I had a question about uh, the large scale wakes. I mean, uh, you are mostly talking about the stellar movement that could be like, you know, perturbed by the large scale wake. But what about the gas dynamics that surrounds the stellar streams? Um, yeah, so actually, for the, the LMC type wakes, the, these are happening on like really, really large scales. So in some ways, we're more interested in the impact this is having on the dark matter. Um, halo, but it will cause, there are possibilities of causing more local um, dynamical impacts. In terms of gas, I don't know. I'd be happy to talk more about that. Um, I don't think that much about gas, so yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, thank Elise again.